Welcome back to the Crypto's Key Conversation. We're going to quickly jump into CoinGecko here. We're currently sitting at a $1.72 trillion market cap, currently sitting at a half a percent up. Looking at the top 10 here, Bitcoin sitting at 36,493, Ethereum sitting at 2,416, Tether is Tether, Binance Coin sitting at 368.57, Cardano sitting at $1.06, XRP sitting at 60 cents, Solana sitting at 91.91, Terra sitting at 65.30, and then Dot sitting at uh, 17.92. As you can see just from the earlier video, we're still sitting at a lot of red in the market, which goes hand in hand with the Bitcoin Fear Greed Index currently sitting at six, uh, 13. We've been in this extreme fear range for some time now with, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty and fear that's going on within the market and a lot of, you know, investors, uh, institution investor, investors, just everybody in, in the market within our space and even in the regular stock market have literally just been decimated in, in regards of our portfolio. Uh, so coming over here to the CNBC, even, this, even though this is sitting at some green, it's, you know, up not even a, a whole percent. Uh, it's kind of minuscule compared to how far we've dropped, you know, in the past couple of weeks, uh, even with the crypto here, as you can see, and we've seen that uh, on the coin gecko charts there. But there, you know, with inflation and, you know, uh, U.S. Jerome Powell and, and the Fed and, you know, what they're going to do with, the, uh, you know, their tapering and the uh, interest hikes and all that stuff. There's just so much uncertainty that's going on. And you can tell that there's a lot of people out there trying to, you know, guess and predict kind of what's going to happen but with that fear a lot of people are selling their assets off especially when it comes to the crypto market i wanted to start this video off here with blockchain backer and he's one of the analysts uh that i follow to kind of help you know gauge where uh i want to start setting up my investment strategy when i invest into the crypto market but he's one of the rare analysts out there that truly feel that Bitcoin is in a bear market and he's waiting for Bitcoin to find its bottom and then have a bounce and then go to its 702 uh, FIB retracement. Typically, you know, per crypto history, that's when the alts tend to have their, their rally so-called blow off top, you know, per our market cycle. So coming over here, he had a poll. He had done two polls. One was in November, uh, November 14, 2021, and then he did one recently. So he says on November 14, the price of Bitcoin was $65,000. And the results were 64.4% for 100,000. This is meaning, you know, the 34,000 people that contributed to this vote, you know, whether they were guessing Bitcoin was going to be 100,000 or 50,000 at the time, uh, excuse me, 20,000. So he said 64.4% for 100,000 and 35.6% for 20,000. So obviously you can see a, a overwhelming majority, you know, thought it was going to be 100,000. That's what the sentiment was at the time. Now he's saying he put up the same poll. He says now the price is uh, Bitcoin is 35,000 and, so, and the results are uh, 32.8% says there, you know Bitcoin's going to hit 100,000, and 67.2% says Bitcoin's going to hit 20,000. So both polls received 34,000 responses. Sentiment has flipped. So that just goes to show you, you know, what market sentiment looks like, and you know how, uh, you know, the investors and the markets are truly feeling about uh, what's going on with Bitcoin and the crypto market at the time. It's super negative, super fearful, and a lot of people are panic selling. You know, uh, these so-called bottoms, or if, you know, if we get to the bottoms. So there's a lot of reasons why. There's so much fear, FUD, and uncertainty. But one of the big ones is, you know, the whole Jerome Powell and, you know, inflation and, uh, you know, what, what they're going to set up for, you know, their rate hikes and, you know, their tapering and how everything's going to uh, kind of pan out. So according to Yahoo Finance, I had an article up that's talking about Fed policies, what to expect from the uh, the, the FMOC uh, meeting this week. So coming over here, the uh, Federal Open Market Committee, they have uh, these meetings scheduled here. So obviously we have one coming up here shortly. On January 25th and 26th, uh, there was a there was a video that came out and they were talking about, uh, I think it was Jerome Powell came out when he was talking about in the next, uh, you know, two meetings they plan to have on, if everything goes according to plan, they plan to have, you know, their tapering dialed into where they can start, you know, working on the whole interest rate hikes. And, and uh, obviously you can see if we have a meeting here, you know, in the next couple of days, the next one, their second one so-called is in March 15th or 16th. So, you know, we can learn, we can see and, and know exactly what they're going to do in regards of the interest rates, you know, as soon as March 15th to 16th, mid-March. Uh, coming over here, uh, there's an article here on CNBC that says inflation surge could push the Fed into more than four rate hikes this year, Goldman Sachs says. So here's some of the key points I'm going to cover. You can go in and read this article if you like, but it says Goldman Sachs expects the Federal Reserve to enact four interest rate hikes this year, but thinks more are possible due to surge inflation. As a quote here says, we see a risk that the Federal Open Market Committee will want to take some tightening actions at every meeting until the inflation picture changes, Goldman Sachs economist David uh, told clients. The Fed also is likely to start cutting its balance sheet by $100 billion a month starting in July, the firm said. 
So, you know, who really knows uh, what exactly uh, Jerome Powell and the Fed are going to do in regards of trying to get this thing figured out. But I, uh, I, I came across Chico Crypto's video, and I think he really laid out uh, how he sees, you know, uh, the so-called uh, fort, or he's almost like uh, guessing or giving his prediction on what he thinks, you know, the Fed's going to do in regards of, you know, with elections, mid-elections coming in. We're just gonna take a listen in to what he said because I thought it was pretty powerful and I think he might be spot on. That tech index would also be in bear market and crashing territory. And of course, we know Bitcoin. It was down nearly 50% from its November peaks. These moves have come even without the announcement of rate hikes. The markets across the board are expecting an announcement from the Fed at the first FOMC meeting this week, an announcement of increased rates. The markets are already pricing it in. The more the Fed scares the markets into believing it will tighten, the bigger the market sell-off and the worse the economic slowdown. Incidentally, this also means the faster the markets crash, the faster the Fed panics and is forced to stabilize stocks because if you didn't know, this year is an election year, midterms. A market crash can't happen or the Democrats will be destroyed in the midterms. Thus, in my opinion, the everything bubble isn't popping this year. The can will be kicked further down the road while inflation soars. But it will come by 2023. Mark my words. Cheers, viewers. I'll see you next time. So that that's uh, Chico Crypto's take on it, and I think there's some uh, some validity to that. You know, just just from like an educated guess on kind of how things are, are panning out in regards to this. You know, uh, mid elections coming, and uh, you know, no one wants you know their their name or you know them being in you know their position to be like to be said of destroying the market. So I mean, obviously they're going to set up some sort of policy, some sort of plan to where, you know, they, you know, protect the market, you know, you know, make it a little bit more healthy, at least until they get through this election period. So, I mean, I think, I think he has some validity there and I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, so coming over here, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty in regards to, you know, there's millions and millions of people sitting on the sidelines because they're un unsure of this market. And uh, obviously, we've had a lot of, you know, huge influential uh, players out in the real world, you know, Kevin O'Leary, uh, you know, a bunch of other people like that, that's, you know, kind of put their stamp on Bitcoin and the crypto market and what it has to offer, which then entices, you know, their followers to, you know, have a little bit more faith in the market, which then can turn them into investors. So there's a lot of things that's been happening behind the scenes, you know, with Metaverse plays, you know, Walmart, Nike, all these other major corporations, institutions and companies coming into the space. So with all that, you know, it's going to bring in a lot more investors. But, you know, I like to try to end this video on some positives. And I think this video here uh, from Squawk Box, there's this gentleman that had high reservations when it came to you know the crypto market and uh, they were pretty much asking them you know you know where do you see this thing like what's our five-year kind of you know what do we look how does this space look you know going going ahead in the future and I kind of liked his response here uh, over the years and you've uh, been let's just say politely skeptical does the, the the turn in crypto even over the past couple of months or at least weeks change your view uh, is there you know a lot of banks obviously uh, traditional banks are now making crypto available in ways that they weren't before. How, how are we all going to look back at this five years from now? Look, my view of it is evolving, not as an, you know, an intellectual. Look, I remember when, um, when they were, you know, a couple of decades ago, maybe 30 years ago, maybe more, they were auctioning off the, uh, they were offering, uh, auctioning off bandwidth for cell phones. And I'm thinking to myself, why would anybody want to carry around a phone? I mean, there's, there's, tens of thousands of phone booths all around the country. Why would anyone carry a phone? At that time, they were like backpacks. And I so thought that was, well, guess what? That worked. The point I take is, I don't, I can't, I don't know. I'm bad at, I, I can't predict the future, but I think it's a, it's a big thing to be able to predict the present, like what is happening. And I look at the, uh, I look at um, the crypto and it is happening. And so I, you know, again, as an intellectual matter, I can't think differently at, about it. But as a pragmatist and as somebody who's skeptical not only of the market, but skeptical of my own views and trying to get on board and acknowledge things that I don't know everything and strange things, things that I think are strange actually happen. I'd say at the point now it's lost a lot of value, but at the point where it's trillions of dollars of value contributing to it and the whole ecosystems are growing around it. 
And of course, we have the benefits of instantaneous transfer and so reduction of credit risk and all the benefits of blockchain that a million people come on your show and talk about. I'm, uh, you know, I may be skeptical, but I'm also uh, pragmatic about it. And so guess what? I, I would, I would want to have, a, I certainly want to have an oar in that water. Hey, Lloyd, I, I mean, I, I mean, let me know what you think down in the comments. I thought that was pretty powerful because it's the truth. I mean, a gentleman that has high reservations and high skepticism, you know, of it, but then has just the, the utmost, like, awareness and realization of like, hey, this is happening. It's it's merely interesting. Just like, you know, cell phones as backpacks back in the day when there's a bunch of, you know, those telephone booths that he was talking about, but it's like, it worked. So he's saying this is happening and it's working. It's currently working. Adoption is massive and it's happening day by day. So coming over here, BlockWorks also had this little uh, tweet thread here that I really liked. So obviously we touched on, you know, Walmart getting into the metaverse with their trademarks and all that stuff. So it says just in Walmart director uh, joins blockchain board and says crypto is a giant shift in finance. So that's massive. Walmart is massive. And then this just happened today. He, uh, they tweeted this four hours ago. It says SEC council joins Coinbase. Massive. Walmart director joins blockchain. We just figured that out. AWS general manager joins Gemini. So then we got another one right here. Microsoft CEO, gaming will play a key role in the development of metaverse. And then also here, you got Nike. Nike is hiring for the metaverse. <laughs> I mean, there's it's happening time after time after time after time. I mean, there's so much adoption happening. And look where we're at. There's so much fear and fun in the market. We're currently sitting at a $1.72 trillion market cap. And there's so much adopting hap adoption happening. Major corporations, major institutions, you know, massive companies, big players out in the industry, you know, buying in and, and adding it to their balance sheets and their portfolios. And then you have the retail investors that are, you know, inspired and influenced by these so-called bigger players. And, you know, they gain the confidence because their favorite, you know, celebrities in the space. So it just brings more and more and more attention, more and more money to the space. We're so early to this party. $1.72 trillion market cap for the entire space. Kathy Wood and ARK Invest, like I always say, they had a prediction at 2030 that this space will be worth 40 trillion. Who knows? This space can be worth way more than that, you know, by 2030. Who knows? We've had so much adoption and, and uh, growth in the past five years alone. This space is, is, is offering life-changing wealth, life-changing innovation, everything for us around the entire world. I truly have high conviction on this space, and I think we're on the right side of history with this space, and that's just my personal opinion. But I just wanted to share my thoughts on kind of what's going on. With all that being said, stay strong out there. Be safe.